And you know, it's been hotter the past couple of summers. Why now? Or That's a good point. Did it happen last couple of summers? We just didn't hear about it. Or is there another factor influencing this? I think like there's lake levels being low or something like shallower that. water heats up more quickly and can be warmer. Or I think there's something else to this story than just, you know, the water's hot. I, I, how anomalous is it? Is the water temperatures? I'm wondering how much warmer than normal this time of year. So I have a lot of questions, a lot of questions. I often have a lot of questions. Anyway, this story, the fish kill, a story uh, sparked a lot of questions for me about a fish kill at Calaveras Lake and outside of the fish dying. What does it mean? What's the process that goes into a fish kill such as this? I had many questions. Maybe you had some of the same questions as well. So we dove into it, got into the story, and we got some real answers and a lot more from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Check it out. Fish floating and not swimming in the water at Calaveras Lake in early August. Actually about a thousand of them, mostly red drum. It's not a plague, but rather the sign of a fish kill. Typically a um, single event that causes a mass die off of uh, fish. And uh, it could be a single species or it could be multiple species. That was Travis Tidwell, a biologist with TPWD and a member of the Kills and Spills team for Region 1 one of four teams that determine whether or not there's a fish kill, and if so, what caused them. In this case, very common, low dissolved oxygen in the water. So what does that mean? Fish, uh, they breathe oxygen that's dissolved in the water. So this is a gas that's dissolved into the liquid uh, of the lake, right? And um, when there's not enough of that in there, then the, the fish will, you'll often see them coming up to the surface and gasping for air. Uh, they're trying to get oxygen. So that begs the question, why isn't there enough dissolved oxygen in the water? And the answer lies within the sun, cloud cover, and not enough wind. When the water gets warm, it loses its ability to hold that oxygen in the water. The warmer the water it is, the less dissolved gases that it can hold. In the summertime, you get this case, of, it's called stratification, where the water is warm up at the top, but you get colder water down below. And that cold water, that's called the thermocline. And so down below, you'll get low dissolved oxygen in that lower water. And then up at the surface, because it's closer to the atmosphere, you get oxygen coming in from the atmosphere. Tidwell says the wind is needed because it acts like a spoon to mix or dissolve the oxygen from the warm surface to the cold below. And mixing of the water, getting it to move, actually helps circulate that oxygen. And when the layers don't mix, the fish are basically in stagnant water. It's kind of like a can of Coke sitting out on a hot day and it goes flat, all of that all of that dissolved gas has, has left the liquid. And that's typically what happens in these low dissolved oxygen events. And here's another element to a fish kill, lack of photosynthesis. During the day, plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. Sunlight helps that process. So at night, the plants aren't producing oxygen, which adds to the problem sending fish floating to the top of the water. It typically happen overnight uh, because there's no photosynthesis going on with the algae and with the plants in the water producing the oxygen, but the fish are still consuming the oxygen. And so overnight, you'll end up having this low oxygen case that'll go on in, into the early morning hours, and that's when the fish usually die off. But not all of the fish die. Tidwell says conditions associated with low dissolved oxygen can be isolated to specific parts of a body of water. It can happen in uh, like a cove where the water is, is kind of like separate from the rest of the main body of water. Uh, that can cause the oxygen to go low. It could be in an area where um, there's not a lot of wind. Another variable that can create a fish kill, too many fish in one spot. Tidwell says quantity was one of the reasons behind this scene last June at Quintana Beach near Freeport along the Texas coast. Having that massive amount of fish itself was enough to, to cause the oxygen to crash. There were more fish than oxygen in the water at the time it, within that area. Tidwell says fish kills are more seasonal. Calaveras Lake usually has one every summer. According to wildlife and park records, there was a fish kill at Calaveras and Bronig Lakes last August as well. 
It's important to point out the obvious coal burning power plant on both Calaveras and Bronig Lakes. They work as necessary cooling reservoirs for the power plants. The water goes in, cools down parts of the power plant, but comes out warm, and that typically leads to lower dissolved oxygen levels, especially in the summertime, where the water is warmer than other inland lakes. All those fish may look good, but leave them for the birds and other wildlife. TPWD doesn't have an official stance on whether these fish are edible, but Tidwell says people may want to avoid eating a dead fish they came across. The fish have been sitting in warm water for who knows how long. The the it, it's not going to taste very good, and there's also you know concerns about bacteria contamination.